Now it is time for the O'Hara News and Editorial. It's the show that brings you the news through the lens of men's rights activism with a hard-hitting red pill perspective. Robert O'Hara and co-host James Huff bring you current events and important guests who will share their insights as well. We also invite the most important people to share their thoughts and experiences here on The One. You. This show invites callers to discuss the events of the day with the hosts and our guests. We want your involvement, so listen, call in, and experience the one show that gives it to you straight in a way no other media outlet will. Let's begin the O'Hara News and Editorial with our host, Robert O'Hara. Tonight, Tempest in the Skeptic Community, Radford vs. Stolznow. We are shouting out to the Skeptic Community to call in and discuss Radford vs. Stolznow case. Radford's posting of extremely damning information regarding Stolznow's claims of his sexual harassment of her has caused an uproar among both skeptics and men's rights activists. While we can't have Radford himself on the show, due to his pending lawsuit, we can have just about anyone else on who wants to talk about it. This case is perceived by many in the skeptic community to be of the utmost importance as false accusations of harassment and sexual misconduct have plagued several prominent members of that movement. So please, if you are a skeptic or an MRA, join us. Hello everybody, welcome back to the O'Hara News and Editorial. I'm your guest Robert O'Hara, I'm joined today with James Huff, and soon, after we do the news, we'll be joined by members of the Skeptic Community, who are going to call in and talk about the uh, Staslau Radford case, and how it's shaking up uh, the Skeptic Community, so we're looking forward to hearing from them. James, how are you doing this evening? I feel great! Good. Tony the Tiger, yay. <laughs> um... Uh, we have uh, some good news stories uh, tonight, uh, but first we have a really sad one. Uh, unfortunately, Peaches Geldof uh, died yesterday at the age of 25. She is the daughter of famous rock musician and uh, activist and father's rights activist, Bob Geldof. This is why we're mentioning it here tonight, because he, he went through a bitter, bitter custody divorce with his uh, ex-wife, now deceased wife, over Peaches. Um, and out of this, because of this, he became a very, very vocal father's rights ad, uh, advocate in the late 90s and early 2000s. He actually did a very, very good documentary on father's rights, the issues of father's rights in, in the U.K., um, that was featured, parts of which were featured on Man, Woman, Myths uh, YouTube series. Uh, this is a very, very sad event. Our condolences go out to the Geldof family. Uh, he wrote a statement today saying she was the wild, <coughs> wildest, funniest, cleverest, wittiest, and most bonkers of all of us. Writing, quote, was, destroys me afresh. What a beautiful child. How is this possible that we'll never see her again? How is, how is that bearable? We loved her, and we will cherish her forever. forever. Uh, very, very sad news. Again, our condolences go out to the Geldof family. So that's the first story. James, you want to take off the second one? Yes, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and take, take, take it away immediately. Okay, the White House, 77 wage gap. Figure isn't accurate, but they will use it anyway. This is coming out of the Washington Examiner. Now, a White House advisor had to walk back the oft-repeated myth that women make 70 cents on the dollar, 
that men make after being questioned about the figure during a conference call Monday. While detailing executive actions President Obama plans to take Tuesday regarding equal pay for women, Betsy Stevenson, a member of the White House Council of Economic Advisors, said very defiantly that despite women contributing 44% of their household incomes, they continue to make less than men. Obama has declared Tuesday Equal Pay Day to highlight his administration's focus on that issue. Quote, They're stuck at 77 cents on the dollar, and that gender wage gap is seen very persistently across the income distribution within occupations, across occupations, and we see it when men and women are working side by side, doing identical work. End quote. Well, that sounds awfully specific. Stevenson certainly sounds like she's saying men and women doing the exact same job are earning very different pay. Myth debunked. <laughs> they want ex except, except as soon as Stevenson was actually questioned about the statistic by McClatchy, reporter Lindsay Wise, the White House advisor, crumbled, admitting her earlier comments were inaccurate. Quote, if I said 77 cents was equal pay for equal work, then I completely misspoke, Stevenson said. So let me just apologize and say that I certainly wouldn't have meant to say that. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess when Stevenson said, quote, we see it when men and women are working side by side doing identical work, that wasn't an accident. 77 cents captures the annual earnings of full-time, full-year women divided by the annual earnings of full-time, full-year men, Stevenson clarified. There are a lot of things that go into that 77 cents figure. There are a lot of things that contribute, and no one's trying to say that it's all about discrimination. But I don't think there's a better figure. Well, no one's trying to blame discrimination. Isn't that what the entire Paycheck Fairness Act and Equal Pay Day are based on? And while we're at it, let's not forget that the White House pays women less than men. But that's okay, said the White House Press Secretary Jay Carney, because they still pay better than the national average. Apparently, a little discrimination is okay in Obama's White House. Now, don't expect Obama to admit to any of this as he travels around the country, continuing to claim that women don't earn as much as men. So they'll never – the Obama administration and, and most liberal Democrats will never, ever abandon the wage gap canard. They will never abandon it. They get far too much political leverage out of it. They, and they're, they're doing the whole thing again. They're going to do the whole thing again with this next presidential election when, when Hillary runs. They're piping up the whole war against women thing all over again. It's the same rhetoric we heard four years ago. Um, or, I'm sorry, but during the last election three years ago, two years ago, sorry, and it, they won't they won't stop. They will never stop using this. It to them, it's it's almost like an addiction to them. They they will never stop. They get they feel they feel they get more political traction out of this than anything else. I but the thing is, is I just don't think that this this lie that they keep on telling is going to they're, they're, they're going to be able to continue to do it forever. You can't lie to all the people all the time. Sooner or later, people wise up to it. And there's a lot of talk about this wage gap thing that uh, people are. I mean, all kinds of all kinds of news outlets are, are talking about this more now. They're bringing more accurate, accurate information to the table. They're challenging this assertion that feminists make that there's there's systemic uh, systematic discrimination against women in the workforce. There's not. And people who thinking people, 
people who read about this issue, people who take the time to learn about it, figure out very quickly that you you get what you get paid what you what you're worth. And that's all there is to it. And if you work part time, if you take more time off of work, if you take fewer risks at work, if you don't assert your bargaining powers into negotiating a pay raise, you're not going to get paid as much as someone who does all those things. And that's just the way it is. But they're not going to – they'll never, ever give this up. They'll never, ever stop talking about the, the pay gap. It's, it's just been too convenient for them. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a, a persistent thing. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be And I might, I might say the, the idea of risk being risk-averse is, is only half the picture because when these men are taking risks – they're also taking not just the risk of success, but the risk of failure and everything that comes with that. You, you understand what I'm saying? They risk death in the workplace, too. I mean, you know, 95% of all workplace deaths are male. Of course men are willing to take more risks at work. Men are willing to take riskier, physically riskier jobs. And when they don't have jobs that aren't physically risky... They, they they take bigger chances with their with their leverage at work. They take bigger financial risks. That's how you become successful in life. And this is something. And women, this is a very 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 well documented fact. Very well studied. Very well documented fact. Women are more risk averse than men are. That's it. Uh, that's all there is to it. And this displays in how much you get paid. It does. Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, we've got somebody who's been waiting very patiently in the wings, uh, who I, I would like to bring on. Uh, but Robert, did did you have something you wanted to put out beforehand? Yeah, sure. Before we, before we bring him on, I want to talk about the what's happening in Canada right now. Uh, as some of you may know, Men's Rights Edmonton have gone on another postering campaign. And they've just now started to get the attention of the media, and as we will discuss very shortly, they've gotten some rather nasty unwanted attention by some detractors. But anyway, in an article appearing today, I'm sorry, yesterday, in Canada.com, Nishmiel, Ish, I'm sorry, Ishmael Ndaro writes, a new poster campaign by men's rights activists has caught the peop- caught people off guard in several cities across Canada. Quote, just because it's your baby doesn't mean it's your trash. The poster reads under the image of a dumpster. Women can stop baby dumping. Don't be that girl. This is followed by a description of the law surrounding manslaughter and infanticide with the implication that women who kill their own babies aren't being punished enough. The conclusion, quote, chivalry, justice, chivalry, sh- Chivalry, justice, has no place in society where men and women are supposed to be equal under the law. The posters, which went up early in early April in at least eight cities across the country, are the latest attempt by Canadian men's rights activists to highlight what they perceive to be a societal double standard in the way men and women are treated. The same group, Men's Rights Canada, ignited a firestorm of controversy in July of 2013 on a series of quote, don't be that girl posters, suggested many women made false rape accusations against consensual partners because they felt embarrassed about their one-night stands or didn't want to take responsibility for their own actions. Uh, This article goes on, but uh, the the hypocrisy of some of these people, and I I wanted to 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 say a quote from one person that this interview that this guy interviewed uh, in this article, this uh, woman is a 28 year old uh, woman uh, said, quote, if I'm interpreting these messages correctly, I'm hearing that they feel feminism and reproductive rights activism is exclusionary and ultimately anti-man. But in a sense, that's like saying anti-racist movements are exclusionary to the the oppressors. The 28 year old venue manager told Canada.com. Quote, their tactless, this this really gets me, their tactless incendiary approach to discourse 
really just cements why we need feminism in the first place. Amazing. Amazing. Like, what happened at the Fee Mango Lecture, that wasn't incendiary and tactless for real people? Really? And, of course, if, <laughs> feminism, of course, is exclusionary to men. It always has been. It's never been about, never been about e- equality between the sexes. And so are reproductive rights for women and not for men. When very rarely do you ever hear a, a feminist even mention, "Hey, you know, it really is kind of unfair that we have these reproductive rights, but you know, men don't." Um, of course, whenever men's rights activists speak up about this inequality, we get shouted down. You know, we're called, oh, "How could, how dare you do that? It's not, it's not the same thing. It is the same thing." But this just shows, that, you know, this, this quote really just shows the hypocrisy of feminists. It, it re- they really are hypocrites. It's just the hypocrisy is astounding at times, and we just learned. From uh, we got word from Fiedelbogen, and we're going to have him on here in just a second. That men's rights Edmonton has gotten death threats for the first time. These guys have actually gotten death threats, and we have one here that reads, "Dear goofs and clowns." Uh, this is from s- someone who posted. I guess some posts over there. Yes, they they posted up on their on the men's rights website, and we got a screenshot of it. It reads, "Dear goofs and clowns." I just thought I'd check in and say hi, since I happen to see your new posters on 118 this evening. I'm around here all the time, and I keep an eye out for goofs like you. It's not just me either. It's not just me either. Word around here is you folks are well li- not well liked. Must all be a little light in the loafers with your drama and whining, which is what you call activism, seems to be all about, and your hatred of women. People seem to think it's about time you pump the brakes, and it's not like anyone's being sneaky when we're ripping down your posters either. I look forward to meeting you in person sometime soon, so do a few of so a few of your other neighbors along 118. Stay safe out there, and don't be that dead rape apologist. Ha ha, the cravat, they call themselves. Wow, death threats. Awesome. Amazing. Uh, I'm sure that, uh, you know, I, I don't think that anybody in men's rights is scared at this point. But this just, again, this just shows the hypocrisy of these people. There's men's rights activists. I don't think there's ever been one truly documented instance where someone actually dug up a real death threat from a men's rights activist uh, against any, any feminist. Of course, we get accused of this all the time, but no one's ever, ever substantiated them. Now we got a threat right here. A real death threat. Right there. Screenshot. Amazing. But we have Fetal Bogan with us. He, he, he's the one who sent this to us. Uh, go ahead and bring Fetal Bogan on, James. You there, Fetal Bogan? Uh, hello, I'm here. Hi, Fetal Bogan. Nice, nice of you to join us again. Well, good uh, to be here. Yeah, great. So you sent us the screenshot here. Uh, when did this come in? It came in at uh, 9.18 p.m. of last night. Well, I'm not too good on my calendar dates, but it says April 7th. I think this is the 8th, am I right? It's the 8th, yeah, so it was last night, yeah. It was last night. Well, I didn't catch up to it until sometime about noon today, well, early afternoon today. And I saw it, and oh my God, you know, I gulped. (laughs) Yeah, sure. That's a real death threat. (laughs) That's a death threat. Well, 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 they might say that they're just being ironic and... Stay safe yes. out there. Don't be that dead, death for dead rape apologist. Ha ha. But I mean, it is the tone of threat, whether it's a death threat or any other kind of threat. It is a threat of violence. It is. It is a death threat. That's. I mean, I don't, I don't see how you could. Uh, it, maybe they were trying to be funny. I guess. I and mean, they said, "Ha ha." Well, it's in very it's, poor taste. If, if it, it's yeah, not certainly it's a death threat. But there's not a whole lot to. You know, there's not a whole lot of mincing of words there. there, there there's not a, room, not a lot of room to wiggle out of that one. No, not at all. Uh, this makes me think of the the um, little episode that happened in, uh, I believe, it was, a, it was a Queens University with uh, the student feminist. What was her name? Oh, the one that, got, the one yeah, that says she got punched in the face, but there's no. She isn't talking to the police. I don't know. I don't know what, what's what the status of the police. Well, are. that that whole story seems to have uh, just dropped like a dead. Oh balloon. sure, yeah. Oh, I'm Let sure. Because I'm, with, uh, I'll tell you what I think happened. I think that she she just refused to talk to the police because she knew the police actually did an investigation, 
she might be found out to have contrived the whole thing. Because, like, you know, we saw a picture of a chipped tooth. But if someone punches you in the face hard enough to chip your it, tooth... It, it, wasn't a very, it, wasn't, it was not a very clear picture of a chipped tooth, what I saw. Yeah. I mean, it was it could a be minor easy. chip and a, a chip that could have been there since who knows how long. Yeah, well, right. <laughs> cap that fell off or something like that. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I think I think the police should have still done the investigation. Yeah, absolutely. Well, maybe we they did. Heard, we, haven't heard, we haven't heard a squeak out of them, uh, to my knowledge, since since the episode went down. So we I... Get, yeah, we should get Danny I, Boy to call him up and ask him. I, what's going on. I presume we've heard the last of that. But yeah. anyway, to tie this back in, um, you know, I this latest thing, I mean, here's something, you know, I mean, we got the words here. She talked about some mysterious emails, uh, which we have not seen. Uh, okay, fine. They want to say that non-feminist people are, are, are violent, uh, you know, and, 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 and going out, going around beating people up. Uh, they can say that. They don't have it very well grounded. Um, assuming that the incident happened, it could have been anybody. But look, right here, we got the goods. We have something at any rate. It's their Somebody sent this message. And you, know, you know what's even you know what's even more startling is the fact that we have the entire fucking body of the Agent Orange files. Mm-hmm. That whole fucking body of work with real people in real professions identified as having said these things, and we're talking about the most hateful, nasty, spiteful, bigoted, murderous... People have painted the criminal nature of their souls in huge, blazing letters. And here we see it bubbling up to the surface again. Well, we've got... We've got these people who are actually in positions of power. Nobody ever looked twice at these people. Other than us. Yeah, well. Well. Maybe. I mean. We know that Adele Mercer was supposedly taken off tonight's little event a week ago. Right. Right. I haven't heard about that one yet, but. Well, go figure. I've got screenshots of their main event page for the Queen's Queen's University thing with Jacqueline Frieden. Friedman. And and supposedly Adele Mercer is supposed to be there. And, you know, their their main event page, they hadn't changed anything on that uh, for the last week. But supposedly... A week ago, they had decided not to put Adele Mercer on there. Anybody who isn't familiar with Adele Mercer, she is a bigoted uh, rape apologist, essentially. I I really don't know of any other way to say it. Maybe I should rephrase it another way. Um, She thinks pedastry is acceptable. How's that sound? Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. Adele Mercer thinks pedastry is absolutely acceptable. So, there we go. Uh, We've got this uh, professor who was supposed to speak at this event. Uh, She puts her foot in her mouth, and the feminists uh, go ahead and remove her from the event. But you know what they said? And I got this screen capped. They actually said on their Facebook page, oh, well, we uh, we decided last week to remove her from the event so we could put a student panel up instead because we thought having, you know, two people of this caliber up there would be a bad idea. We wanted to give room to the little guys, so to speak. So we're going to put a couple student panelists up on the stage instead. No. No. They're lying through their fucking teeth. Don't believe a word of it. What's really happening is the fact they know Mercer is now a liability. And they're going to fucking throw her under the bus without letting us know. 
that they're throwing her under the bus. <laughs> because Lord knows if they did that, that'd be a huge fucking piece of dirty laundry. They've been sucking at Adele Mercer's dick for years now. Years! <laughs> They've been all over it. <laughs> Until we come out and actually decide to call her on her bullshit. Well, guess what? There's more than Adele Mercer that we're coming after. So there's going to be a lot of feminists who are going to get thrown under this bus. In fact, I would calculate all of them are going to try to slit each other's throats within the next 20 years. And we're going to make that happen. That's a death threat by proxy, James. <laughs> <laughs> death threat by proxy. Oh, gosh darn metaphors. Let me, ref uh, let, me, let me rephrase that. They're all going to end up trying to disown each other in a mad scramble to salvage whatever bit of credibility and dignity they think they have left. And it's going to be a bloodbath within their ideology when they realize that it was never really that. It was their belief system. Well, a metaphorical bloodbath. Now, let's be clear about that. Mm, yeah. Right. Oh, God. God. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did I do it again? You did. did. Got to be careful about that. Oh, what, I, what I meant to say, let me see if I can phrase it a little more clearly, is that they're all going to go around and essentially stab each other in the back. Oh, wait. no. Metaphorically, not with a real <laughs> knife, James. Stab each other in the back. That's right. <laughs> you get the picture, right? Oh, yes. So, Adele, if you happen to hear this, <laughs> how's them apples? Huh? <laughs> All right. Well, by the way, by the way, Adele, if you happen to hear this, uh, you remind me of Medusa, the Gorgon. That's just your hairstyle, okay? All right, listen, guys, I got to go on to the to the main news story. Uh, to prime us for the callers in here now, because um, we're kind of running out of time for the first part of the show. Uh, Fee Logan, thanks for calling. Is there anything else you want to add to uh, what's going on in Men's Rights Edmonton, or um, before before we, we get you out of here? Is there anything you want to? Anything else you want to say? Uh, thanks, but no thanks. I think that wraps it up for now. Okay, well, listen, stick around if you wanted to call in. Maybe you might want to get in on the conversation a little bit later on the show. So please feel free to uh, to to get back in uh, in with us if you want to do that. All right. Okay. Great. Well, thanks for, for thanks a lot for being on Fee Logan. Always a pleasure to have you on. It's an honor. Okay, so on to the main news story tonight. Uh, as many of you know, last week, Ben Radford, who was a well-respected and well-published member of the skeptic community, posted, or rather published, a website that was dedicated to answering accusations of gross sexual harassment made by Karen Stalslau, a former friend and lover of his, that he apparently had a sexual relationship for some time with, who was also a, a, a prominent member of the skeptic community and well-published herself. They at one time worked on a podcast together. Stazlau has publicly accused, well, she, at first, last August, she published an article, she had an article published in Scientific American in which she said that she had been sexually harassed for years by an unnamed man. It was a very damning article. It was a very, very long-winded narrative of, you know, th terrible things happening to her at the hands of this harasser. She, again, she didn't name uh, Radford personally, but within days, people from all over the Atheism Plus community and their supporters started attacking Ben Staslow and started naming him as the perpetrator. This happened within days of that article being published. Staslau is, is maintains innocence throughout this entire time. You mean Radford? Has, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Rad, I said Radford. Radford has maintained his innocence <clears throat> his, this entire time and has asked several times for a retraction. And after finally thinking that he got one uh, by working it out with 
Stasilov's wife, or I'm sorry, husband, he published what they had worked on, and then she denied giving the go-ahead for that retraction. There's a lawsuit that he has filed against her for, among other things, fraud and defamation and tortious, uh, let's see here, tortious interference with contractual contractual relations. Uh, and he is, in this post that he put up last week, he actually provides a voluminous amount of documentation, emails, screenshots, YouTube videos, that her accusation, basically that, that her accusations were false. He documents the fact that she was the one who initiated the relationship. She was the one who wanted the sexual relationship to continue even after she got married. And that she was the one who was really giving him a hard time. So this is a huge deal because this, this is a thing that has been happening in the SCAP community in recent years. The feminists, the Atheism Plus people, have started using the rather predictable tactic of creating what we'd like to call a threat narrative around here. They are trying to create a problem that really isn't there or just was never there to begin with. This idea that ath- the atheist community and these atheist conferences are not safe for women, that people, women in the atheist and skeptic community are, are being harassed well, all the wait, time wait, and someone needs to stop this. Can I... Can I, I? I need to verify, re-verify something. You said sure. that that Stan what, Stalls now. Stalls, Stalls now, now. And, and and Radford right. were having a on-off yes. sexual relationship, mm-hmm. and she got into a committed relationship. Yes, and decided she wanted to continue to. Fuck this other guy. She's, yes, absolutely. She's, she wanted to continue doing this. Oh, and also not only that, but but uh, so she's a Radford, slut. Yeah. Well, Radford also okay has documentation emails from her husband. Uh, I think it's Will Bax Baxford Baxford. I guess I can't remember his first name. It's right not in front of me. But um, he he basically has emails from Baxter saying that she had well. First of all, no, he also has actual police reports of her um, being charged with domestic violence. She's been violent towards this guy. She's accused her husband of all kinds of terrible things as well. So she has a history of false accusations and a history of violence and a history of psychopathic behavior. Really not – if you look through in the links um, in the article, I'm going to put the article that I wrote in on AVFM into the chat room for you people listening. Let's stick it in there right now. Okay, it's in there. It's also on. It's also at AVFM. If you want, to, if you're listening, you're not in the chat. Just go to AVFM. The article on Staz, 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 Stazlau and Radford is in the news section. It's called Tempest in the Skeptic Community. Go there and look at the links to Radford's webpage. Are in there. Go and look at the timeline and look at the documentation. This guy has meticulously documented every single little thing in here. This guy's case, now this is very unusual that someone would do this while suing somebody, while there's a case pending for slander and libel and, and you know, what he's suing her for. It's very unusual because most, most lawyers would say, don't talk about this to anybody. But this guy is so confident because he has all of this documentation that he's going to win, and he felt that it was his duty to share with people because he feels people should know. And people should know. This is... Again, back to what I was saying, this is a, an example of feminists creating a threat narrative so they can basically get their way. And I think in this case, we have a woman, and there's, I'll, I'll say it right now, I'm not going to mince words here. This woman has got a personality disorder. There's something going on up there. She, is a clear, she has a clear record of lying. She has a clear record of uh, violence. Uh, she, she has a history of false accusations. And it's it's a it's a real shame that this man Ben Radford is going through this because this is the kind of thing that really destroys your life when you have a, a colleague, a former colleague, and and who is lovers with you, decide to destroy your life like this. It doesn't take much to destroy someone's whole career and destroy their networks of friends and their acquaintances. It just takes a couple of very well placed lies, and like the best of liars. 
And he's documented this. Like the best of liars and the best of character assassinations, this woman has gotten other people to do her lying for her. This is what really, really puts her in the classification of someone I think uh, is a sociopath. And God bless Ben Radford. He set up a, you know, another thing, she set up a, a fundraiser and she's already raised $70,000. And this is just in the past 10 days she's done this. It's amazing how, how willing people are, are to give to anyone claiming to be a victim. Ben started a fundraiser. He's only got a thing now, maybe 2000 2500 bucks there now. Please, people, consider giving money to this guy. The link is there in the article. Uh, go there and give a couple bucks because this guy really needs your help. But I think what's going to happen? You know, you know, you know who else might need some help is her fucking husband. Yeah, seriously. I mean, I mean I holy crap! There. He's the one living with this thing. Yeah. Yeah, what the fuck? Well, it seems that and, he's and, and not not only. Uh, I mean, you know, he maybe maybe he's into the whole uh, cook holding open relationship thing. Maybe I don't know, but. Well, if, clearly, if, it's a, if clearly not, it's a relationship. Clearly if, it's if not, that is. If he's not, then that is some really damning evidence from that email. Yeah. Where she's, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. She's, she's basically telling Radford, she wants to fuck him, after she's gotten married. Married. Yeah. And she said, "Oh, well, you know, he's cool with it. My husband's cool with it." No, I don't. I don't think so. I don't know about that, man. Well, but I, clearly, I, this is a hey, bad. Like, clearly well, this I mean, we, is, we can't. We can't. We can't attribute that. We no, can't, you know, sure. put that attribute. Uh, all, all I'm saying is, if he's not, I can only imagine what kind of fucking mental horror oh, he's guy. going through right now. This living with people who are like this is truly awful. I've had uh, my run-ins with people who are like the way she is. Not a pleasant thing. They make their life miserable. And being married to someone like that, it just, uh, it's just it's awful. Awful. The guy needs to. Lose. I wish. Actually, I wish we had gotten Doctor Terror on the show because he would. Have, she would have some great advice for him. Uh, because this woman clearly, after reading the emails and, and reading what Ben Radford had to say, she's she's just the kind of person that uh, Doctor Terror talks about when when she writes right, right. When, she, when she write when she writes for shrinks for, for men. Uh, it's, she's a personality disorder person. And I, I'm not a psychologist. I I, don't, I can't make a diagnosis. Well, let's let's sure. let's you know let's. But it's just. Let's I'm just saying. As far as I'm concerned, guy, is, let's hope this guy is either a, a hopeless cuckold, or otherwise he's really, um, you, you know, as far as being into that thing. Yeah. Well, or he's or or he's having a really rough time right now. Yeah. Well, it's really amazing. The, yeah, time. yeah. The guy had actually the guy had actually voiced his concerns about her to Radford before they even got married. So this guy got married. Uh, clearly, after he saw the red flag, so I don't know. I think maybe he might be in an, what, what's known as a, what some people call an enabler, you know, just kind of the kind of personality who uh, gets into really has a habit of getting into relationships with people like this. Um, but anyway, we have a lot to talk about later on. We, we're, we got people calling in from the skeptic community, and we're going to um, going to have them on. Uh, James, why don't you go ahead and give people the call in number? Uh, so people can get prepared to call in. All right, folks, we are ready to take your calls. The call-in number is 214-666-6148. Call us, call us, or we will steal your soul from the, from the, bottom, from the bottom of your foot. <laughs> we're, again, that, that we're that is, good. <laughs> just just to give you all that number again, in case y'all didn't write it down or didn't get it, it is two one four six 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 one four eight. Please give us a call. Uh, we're gonna go to a music break now to give you guys a chance to call in, and we'll be taking your calls soon.
And we are back. And we're back here. We're joined already. Ask Fetal Bowden to stick around with us a little bit. He's a little bit familiar with what's going on in the skeptic community. Uh, welcome back, Fetal Bogan. Uh, again, we want you to call in. The phone number is 214-666-6148. And I know that people in the skeptic, I, I put a couple feelers out there to... Uh, to get folks to call in to, to talk about this, I really, really want to hear somebody from the skeptic community to talk, call in to talk about this. Well, Field book. you know what? Hold on, just a moment. We got somebody else on the line here. Give me just a minute. Go ahead and uh, okay, sure. So, Field book, you've been you've been uh, kind of following what's been going on, like like all men's rights activists, you've been following what's going on in the skeptic community. Uh, well, over over the last two or three years, yes. Yeah. So uh, you. The way I see it, and I want to ask your opinion on it, is this a clearly is clearly a co option scheme by the feminists? Oh, clearly, it's what they do. Yes, yeah, this is what they do, and they've done this with other movements before. They they did this with AIDS, the AIDS scare. They did this with they, violence. They do it's, this with every kind of human community, bar none. They can get yeah, their hands yeah, on. Yeah, even down to the Model Railroad Club, they'll do this. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Yeah, at the local, at your local church, hey, folks. Folks, I, I hate to do this. I, I must. Uh, break in. We've got some breaking news. Eventually, we'll actually have music for that sort of thing. But uh, we're bringing on Danny Boy right now. Oh, sweet, hey, Danny Boy! Calling Danny in Boy, from what's up? calling in from Canada to let us know uh, what happened up there at Queens. Danny, what's up? How you doing, there, guys? It's uh, yeah, I'm up here at Queens University in Kingston. Uh, the lecture has just ended, and I'm wearing my fedora proudly here, I might add. Uh, but uh, the lecture has just ended. Um, it was interesting. We'll obviously have written reports on that uh, very soon, within the next few hours. What I found kind of uh, interesting, how their rhetoric had changed uh, in the last week or so. It, is, it seems now they are uh, acknowledging male victims a little bit more. Um, their, their language is changing a little bit, it seems. Um, at first, we weren't even going to get entrance into the event, and but we uh, we invoked our rights under Section Two of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, freedom of uh, the press, and uh, basically forced their hand to let us in. Um, we were re- respectful. We weren't blaring on horns, beating on school property, and acting like a bunch of like the baboon brigade either. And no fire um, alarms, right? Pardon? No fire alarms, right? No fire alarms, no, there was no fire alarms, unlike, you know, how when the feminist protest cafe events, there was no fire alarms pulled this time. Um, at, when the question and answer session actually happened, um, we raised our hand, the group of us here, you know, we raised our hand up to uh, ask a question, and it seemed like we were being ignored until one female member in the audience, and God bless her soul, pointed out that we were being ignored, and that kind of forced... Uh, the event organizers to uh, address our questions and our concerns. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes, yeah, so there was a lovely woman in the audience who said, excuse me, there are three people over there who have been waiting patiently to ask questions sort of deal, and that's when they clued in, and, you know, they no longer could have, avoid uh, avoid us. Uh, you know, so it was so the group, so the group was um, our AVFM news director, Jim Bisett, uh, Attila Vincer, yep. yourself... Yep. And yep. uh, was there one other? Our honey badger Susie. Oh, okay. All right. Yes, our honey, our honey badger Susie was here with us. Oh, sweet. And sweet. Uh, yeah, she was. Uh, um, I'd like to say that the security personnel operated in you know complete uh, expertise. They were put in a bad position by uh, Levina Gender Studies, which is the group that organized it. Uh, uh, the Lavina Gender Studies said, no, no, we don't want these people in. I don't know. I guess we had the wrong color skin or something, maybe. Uh, it seemed like it to well, me. Well, you know, uh, uh, with the whole intersectionality thing they have going on, unless you're a person of color, uh, a, a female person of color. Ugh. You, it, you're just well, we, no, we, 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 had the, we had the wrong color skin because, you know, we don't buy into feminism. We don't have the feminist skin on us. All right? Tell did, 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 what do they say? Did they say that they were scared of you guys, or that, or that they they had gotten? Did they, did they, they basically the said that the, they basically said that because they rented out the hall, which they kind of really didn't. They they get free access to it by the school via the school, um, but uh, uh, they said that you know because it was a, a public event that they were hosting, 
that said, that, you know, they had the right to evict people. And I'm like, excuse me, uh, how about Charter of Rights to Freedom, Section 2, Freedom of the Press? Um, and you are blocking press individuals. And then we pointed out that they were going to let in Queen's, uh, University, Journal, uh, Queen's University Journalism students in. Uh, and they were fine to go in, but we weren't. So selective, uh, you know. So again, we didn't do, have the. Do you have we didn't have the feminist video color of skin. all this? I'm not quite sure what's going on with that, and um, we'll have to talk about that later. Hey, um, do, they had hey. signs up. No, yeah. no filming of any kind permitted. No audio and no video. That was the signs that were put up. So, you, so you guys don't have any audio or video. Um, I have to discuss that. I have to discuss that a little later. Understood. I'm sitting right outside the hall right now. Um, there was a couple other interesting things. Uh, they actually brought in a bunch of thugs with like a, a pit bull and stuff to try and intimidate, oh, which was which was, was was kind of funny because as soon as they did that, I just started chanting "No rape speech on campus" and handed out flyers. Oh wow! <laughs> wow. And then I went over and pet their dog. Oh sweet! <laughs> well, that, yeah, was nice. with you, that was nice of them. Yeah. Well, no, I went over and said, oh, your dog bite me. They said, nope. I said, good. I went over and the dog was happier and so happy to get it, you know, get petted by me and, and you know, had attention paid by me. But, yeah, they had a bunch of thugs out, uh, you know, not the security. The security were, like I said, did their job professionally. They were excellent. They were really, really just put in a bad spot by uh, Levina Gender Studies. But, you know, some friends of, uh, of the feminists on campus had organized their own thug gang. How menacing were so, these thugs now, really? Yeah, uh, there was about, well, actually, they were fairly, you know, fairly big people, fairly large people. Okay. Even the security guard said, well, and, you know, you're out there, I, I couldn't save you if, if I tried. Well, that's not good, because that's their job. No, but you know what, well, it is, but you know what, like I said, they brought some fairly big thugs. <laughs> well, you know what, this, this is it, guys. This is where, uh, once again, we... We have feminists uh, who try to intimidate uh, through uh, violence or coercion, and they and they are not afraid to use proxy violence if they have to. Well, they love to use proxy violence. We know that it's it's, it's standard modus operandi, uh, you know, by them. Um, you know, they, they they use proxy violence. They get their their they get their simpleton white knights to come out and save them and inflict that violence for them. Yep. Yeah, the, the ultimate useful idiots. They're always around. Um, they're always around. Oh, of course they're always around, because there's always dumb asshats out there who think they're going to get the poon if they if they friggin' put out the fist. It's, it's why not. Yeah, they, you know, they're, they're, they're simpletons. That's exactly what they are. They don't realize what they're doing. Uh, you know, they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're beggars, you know. They might as well be on the street corner with their hat in hand, literally, but they're just begging for something else. And willing to jump through, you know, God knows how many hoops to do it. Um, Jacqueline did get the invite down to the International Men's Conference in June, Detroit, and uh, she did, you know, we did pass on the message that Paul said hi to her, and uh, you know, she kind of laughed a little bit about it. She seemed kind of nervous laugh, uh, but uh, you know, that's neither well, was, here nor was there. She, was she pleasant? Um, was she pleasant otherwise? She was, yeah, she was pleasant. Um, would you like to speak to, possibly talk to Jim for a couple of minutes? Yes, I'd like to talk to Jim. You get him. Yeah, okay, here's Jim. You guys can talk to him, and then possibly we can switch on over to uh, somebody else. But here's Jim for now. It's radio, is it? Okay. Hello, Jim here. Hey, Hi, Jim. How are you doing? Hello, Jim. I'm doing very well. Good. Wonderful. I'm doing very well. So, uh, how, so, give us your version of events. So, how did you, did you have a... a long drive up there or it was just you and uh, uh, of course it was you and Danny and, and we had Susie there and, and Attila um, how, how was how's your day been but aside from this uh, from this event I mean I'm, I'm sure you've I'm, tell us about it <laughs> it was hectic um, you know up early this morning and you know my girlfriend cooked breakfast for us which was great and uh, of Sweet. course Attila was late again sorry Attila for throwing me the bus again but, um, you know, we all I jumped into his car and he drove us out here and we had a great time coming out because we were all really excited by the event and we were excited about getting out and, you know, doing some good work and, you know, getting the good word out there and looking forward to a dialogue. You know, so we got out here, we did a little bit of 
um, activism work and, you know, then we went to the event. Um, there was a few problems with security. They weren't too keen on us being here, but, you know, they were just doing their job, which is understandable. But, um, you know, I think the organizers weren't too happy with us being there. We're worried about his recording and we're worried about the fact that we were MRAs. But eventually kind of reason uh, won through and they realized that, well, you know, we've got to let these guys in because to not do so would, you know, create obviously bad publicity for us. And I'm sure security wanted us in because they were worried about, well, security. Um, and, you know, the event itself was, uh, there was tension, I'll be honest with you, but the point that we were trying to make when we went there was to raise the issue of Adele Mercier's rape apology, which we did so, and even uh, Jacqueline Friedman and the panel all agreed that um, comments such as those aren't acceptable. It's, it's not acceptable at all for those things to happen in GMO facilities. So I think that while... Uh, while they weren't as au fait with the details of the situation, they agreed in principle that something like that should never happen. So I think that that's a bit of a, a PR success for us, and I think that uh, Miss, <laughs> Miss Mercier is going to have some explaining to do uh, pretty soon. At least I hope so, in any case. Well, that's, that's great news, uh, and, and once again, this, this simply mirrors exactly what I said would happen, uh, that the feminists, in order to do whatever they could to save themselves, would go ahead and take one of their own who has been amongst their number for many, 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 many years, and who has been getting away with saying you know, similar things for many, 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 many years. Well, as soon, yes, as, we, as, soon, as, as, soon as we come in... And we point out the duplicity. They are forced, forced to throw her under the bus. Well, I'm not sure if they threw her under the bus 100%. But um, since they definitely agreed in principle, and uh, as I said, you know, we have the transcripts of the conversations. Yes, it is in, a, in, in essence them saying, <clears throat> sorry Adele. You're on your own on this one, and the sisterhood is not going to back you. And you know what? In fairness to Jacqueline Friedman and people like her, even though we don't disagree with her, or I should I say we do disagree with her quite vehemently on a number of issues, she did what we would have hoped she would have done, which is to say, I don't agree with that, and I don't think that's right. So that's, that's a big positive from the event, and I'm not going to say that there's hope for them, but what I will say is, in this situation, they did do the correct thing, and they did do the moral thing, and I wouldn't say that they should be applauded for that, but I will say I'm happy that they did do it. Well, we, we certainly appreciate your take on this, Jim. Um, no problem. Yeah, thanks a lot, Jim. Thanks a lot, everybody, for, for going and covering this for us. This is really, really uh, an important an important development, an important event. Well, we're looking at we're looking forward to see some written up about it, too, so... Well, we, of course, we'll do a write-up, we'll do the whole thing, and, you know, we're just doing our, uh, our due diligence, we're just doing what we have to do, and it, 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 it's all part of what we do. You know, you guys do your bit, we do our bit, and we're, we're very, very happy to do it. And before, you know, before you let me go, I just want to say a big shout-out to the security crew here today. Uh, they were really good, they were doing, dealing with a difficult situation. They're here now, they're trying to kick us out of the building, they're getting violent. I don't know what they're going to do, I'm just kidding. They're great guys, so I wanted to say to them, <laughs> well done, yeah, they're really good. So, uh, you know, they came and they explained the rationale behind things. So, um, yeah, Queen's University Security, you guys rock. I'm on the radio, I'm just letting everybody know that we appreciate the work you guys did, okay? You're here. Awesome. Uh, that that's that's good to hear. I'm I'm glad glad to hear we've actually got uh, some people out there who who take the job seriously and uh, who you know who are, aren't just gonna you know bend everybody over who uh, these ideologues disagree with and, and fuck them in the yeah. ass. That's um, also, I, think, um, I think it's yeah. important. I think that they it, it's first of all it's important. And John the others has said this before. He said that if you're going to do it, it's really important that you – I don't know if you guys did this, but it's really important to call the security or the police ahead of time and say, hey, listen, 
here's what's happened to past events. We are we are expressly nonviolent. We've never gotten violent. They're going to accuse you, us of being violent and this and that and this and that. And so far, uh, even when that hasn't happened, we've had very good luck with, with the police and security. They've I think that um, in every instance uh, in Canada, whatever these events have been taking place, the security and the police have been very, very responsive and very, very good at their job. So, well, yeah, I think, that's, I think that's a great, yeah, I think that's a great lesson to learn for future sure. events, no doubt. Yeah. Well, I gotta go, guys, because you know we're keeping these these people and they have homes to go to. So I'm gonna sign off. Um, I, uh, I will, of course, follow up with ev- with all the readers and all their followers. And you know, there's gonna be more content to come. So keep your eyes open, guys. You know, uh, we're just getting started with the coverage of this event. Okay. Excellent. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Jim. Jim. Okay. Thanks a lot for bye coming. Bye, guys. Right, bye, bye. No problem. Bye, bye. Hey, Robert. I, yes. I say we. I say uh, you know we move on to another music break. Okay, and, great. And I'm going to go ahead and give out the number again. Uh, the subject for tonight uh, is Radford versus Stoltz now. Okay. And we want to be sure to get some skeptics to call in and tell us exactly what they think is going on within the skeptic community. So, the number is 214-666-6148. Call us. We're going to play a song for you.
And we're back. We're back. Uh, Fetal Blog is still with us. We are waiting for callers from the skeptic community. We had some promises that people would call in. Unfortunately, they haven't. I hope they're listening. I put the link up in the slime pit. Uh, was told that uh, some guys would call in. But I haven't heard from anybody yet. So please, guys, call in. Um, so. Yeah, before I turn 41. Yeah. <laughs> when was your birthday, James? Today, today, okay. today is my my fortieth birthday. Oh wow! Happy fortieth! Yeah. How do you feel? Um, forty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it ain't that bad. It's not as bad as people say it is. You know. <laughs> just, well, know. you know, I I, I look at it, far. I look at it, and I think, depending depending on how quickly the rate of technology continues, I either have one half of my life over, or maybe a third of my life over. Well, you know, whatever. I, I figure I'm going to die when I'm going to die. That's kind of... <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd be the... Well, I'll be 43 this year, so... I don't I don't feel that old. I don't you know. People say that, you know, you start falling apart in your 40s. I'm not a 19-year-old kid anymore, but I'm not decrepit yet. <laughs> I'm in the best shape of my life. Anyway, the call-in number, again, is... Uh, let me get it up in front of me here. 214-666-6148. Please, anybody, feel free to call in and talk about this. Uh, if, you're, if you're in the chat room and you're not trying to talk to us on the air, you're, you're probably wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Call in, people. <laughs> got a lot of people in the chat room, too. There's a lot of people here. Yeah, no, All right. I, I see that. Okay, so we were talking with Fiat Logan before the break and before um, we got that update from Danny Boy and, and Jim about the, the co-option scheme that feminism seems to run on any movement or interest group that becomes successful. And we've seen the skeptic movement, or the atheism movement, become very popular in recent years. They had a tremendous rally a few years ago in Washington, D.C., where 60, I think it was like 30,000 people showed up. And it, it was just really clear that a lot of people were getting into skepticism. It was becoming a movement in and of itself, or to the extent that you can call it a movement. And this is around the time when Atheism Plus started. Now, we see these same tools that feminists use over and over and over again to co-opt something. They come in, they try to make it the movement, whatever it is, about, quote, social justice. And they come in, and then they start saying, we should make it, we should, we should, we should import or infuse feminism in this because really feminism would make this whole thing so much better. And they also create a threat narrative. This is the real, this is what really gets me, and I'm sure what gets most of the people in the skeptic community. They create a threat narrative. They they say erroneously they they actually make up uh, they they whip up hysteria they say well you know women aren't safe at these skeptic conferences we need to have we need to have policies to deal with we need to have seminars about this we need to do this we need to do that and it's all feminist bullcrap all of it and they do this in order to get control to take control of the discourse and then what we see in the skeptic community what we see in other areas. But I think more so in the skeptic community than, than any others, you see actual individuals being targeted, prominent individuals being targeted uh, with accusations of sexual misconduct, and this is really bad. This is I'm not I'm not a part of the skeptic community myself, but it's just it's so sad to see this really neat group of people who are honest, who are intellectually honest, who are intellectually stimulating people, who have I think who have some very important things to say. Uh, who can engage in very important activities, to see their community being really being put under siege like this is just awful. But this is what we see feminists do all the time. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's just, it, it's sad. It's really sad to see it happen. And I'm, I'm, I am encouraged, however, to see that there are a lot of people in the skeptic community who are holding the line. Guys like, the amazing, the amazing atheist and Thunderfoot uh, and and Justin Vacula have really put their foot down and said, "Wait a minute, these people are screwing up this whole thing. 
they're not being productive, they're being counterproductive, they're hurting people, and this isn't skepticism. This is not, feminism is an ideology, and we are anti-ideology. Um, and I, I, I'm really, I'm glad to see it happening. But it's amazing that the Atheism Plus guys have gotten such a foothold so far in the skeptic movement. And it's really sad that what's happening to Ben Radford right now, this is, it's got to be awful for him. He's lost so many friends, uh, and his head is work life really, really marred because of this. And I hope that he sues the pants off of this woman and gets every bit of that $70,000 that she has already raised in her fundraiser. I think that people who donate to her fundraiser are actually donating, are in effect going to be donating to Ben Radford's, well, basically, it's, it's all going to go to Ben Radford, basically. I really think he's going to be that successful. Afina Blogan, what other thoughts do you have on this? Tell us, tell us what you think about the co-option that's going on here. Well, I think it's, uh, it's what feminists do. Uh, as I said before, they try to get into any kind of community, uh, industry, culture, subculture, you name it, uh, where people might be around, you know, talking to each other and not talking about feminism. Can't hey have that. Uh, I hate, hate to break in, but, but we actually have a caller. Oh. Wonderful. So we are going to bring our caller on. And we would like to say welcome to Micro. Micro, glad you called in. Thank you. Yeah, you said you, you expressed interest in the slime pit that you want to call, and I just put the post up of the, the show post, uh, and I got some, actually there were some people that weren't too happy that I posted it there. I should have just sent it to you directly. Um, but thanks for calling in. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I heard what you were saying about it earlier. Um, you, you got the names right eventually. Um, oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, I'm kind of tired here. Sorry about that. I, I know that feeling. Um, and uh, yeah, it, what, what you were talking about was uh, was a fair capsule summary of what happened and what's going on now. Have, but, have, um, you, have you read the archive? Have you read his website? Uh, I'm sure you've probably read, read through his entire website, have you? Uh, who is Radford's? Yes. Yeah, I, I did a, a video where, where I summarized that and I was trying to get people to donate money to his legal fund. Oh, okay, cool. So, I saw yeah. that. I didn't watch it, though. Yeah, I, 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 saw, his, I saw his website. And for the longest time, he had... Uh, remained silent, and that just gave a chance, that vacuum gave a chance for people uh, within Free Thought Blogs and Atheism Plus and Skeptic to just run with it. You know, I, I often wonder whether or not he didn't let that happen, knowing that once he came out with this information, it would be so damning as to discredit all those asshats over at Atheism Plus. Uh, you know, I have, a, I have a different take on it. I've only met Ben Radford uh, once, and he doesn't know who I am, but I, I saw him speak once. And, you know, he's a nice enough, decent enough guy, and I think it's very difficult to realize that someone that you were in a relationship with just suddenly turned around and did this to you. I think he was trying to broker a deal because it, it just... He, when you're dealing with someone like uh, Karen Stoles now, and I'm not a doctor and I don't play one on TV, but she seems to have a lot of borderline personality traits. Totally. I think when you're dealing with someone like that, by the time you figure out what they are, it's kind of too late. So they've already done the damage, and I've, I've had that experience in my life before, too, and reading the, the timeline that Ben Radford put up, there, I, I, can, I can totally... I, I, Identify with the things he's going through because it's the same. You see the same tricks that these people play. And again, I'm not a doctor either. I wish we had Doctor T on the show. I wish I, I should have tried it harder to get her on. I just didn't have the time. But anyway, well, you know, before... this, this thing is an ending tomorrow, so you do have time to follow up with Doctor T. Okay. Um, but let's take first. Um, let's let's get some background on you. I know that you've uh, you're a, you're a reader of AVFM and you have your own YouTube channel. You're a member of the skeptic community. Right. Yes. Okay. So, okay. So you. Uh, so tell us what you think about. Let's kind of go towards. Let's talk about atheism plus and 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 feminism's growing influence on the atheism community, and it seemed how it seems to have kind of hair brick wall. What do you think about yep. the co-option of of the skeptic community and and the, the 
progress the fe- that Atheism Plus has made thus far, and the pushback that it seemed to have, that it seemed to have gotten by a lot of prominent members of the skeptic community like Thunderfoot uh, and 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 TJ, tell us how how you feel this thing is working out. I've talked I talked a lot with Justin Vacuil about this, and also with the Amazing Atheist. I want to hear your take on it. Well, you've got, well, you've got two things that are conjoined that aren't really uh, may not belong together. You've got atheism and skepticism. Um, atheism isn't a belief system; it's just a, a lack of belief. Um, and you can be an atheist for any number of wrong reasons, including irrational ones. You could not believe in God because you you think that religion is cramping your style, not for any critical reason. On the other hand, skepticism is actually uh, a methodology of empirical verification. So you've got people who are conflating the two terms, atheist and skeptic, and you've got a lot of people who have recently come into the atheist movement and then try to add all of this other social justice stuff into atheism that really has no place. Although I'm not saying there's no place for things like uh, social justice and humanism and uh, various rights groups, but not in atheism. They have their own groups, and if you want to pursue that thing, there's already structures in place. So there's the co-option of atheism right there. And in the skeptical movement, there's people who have come in, and I refer to them as rule-peddling carpetbaggers, who come into the skeptical community because it, it's the same reason. You never ever notice during some administrations uh, in the United States, when they put someone in charge of, say, the EPA or the FDA, there was someone who formerly worked for a drug company or was a company that was the biggest sure. polluter. Yes. You won't put people in a regulatory position, even though it, 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 it's a it's at odds with what they actually do. And I think a lot of these people came into the skeptical movement to keep it close to them so that they could claim to be skeptics and use skepticism as a stick to beat other people right. without internalizing any of the methodology of skepticism. Um, it so, Go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, that, I mean, the shortest way to put it is you've got a bunch of people right now in the atheist and skeptical movement who are frauds. It seems to me, first and foremost, that feminism, being an ideology, is is fundamentally because it's an ideology is fundam- It's like a cult in and of itself. It really is. It is. It, it will be fundamentally incompatible with any of the values of the skeptic community. Um, it, and it amazes me that atheism plus has had as much success as it has. Why do you think they have had? As not, I'm not saying they're incredibly successful. I, you know, the amazing atheist says that they're going to be gone well, in five years. But why? Do you, what do you attribute their success to? Well, it's the same reason why people voted for the Patriot Act without reading it. I mean, you're not going to vote against something called the Patriot Act. I mean, you sure. can have a piece of legislation that's called the Happy Puppy and Kitten Law, and who's going to vote against it? So when they come across saying that they're for social justice and equality, who wants to be against that? Sure. And, it's, and, and again, I, I mean, you can make a, you can make a kind of. A, I've, I've said a lot of these people deal with the world at large the same way that they deal with their own fucked up dysfunctional relationships. And by the time you figure, just like a borderline personality, by the time you figure out what they're all about, it might be too late. So the so the only people that atheism plus is really attracting are the type of people who aren't skeptical enough to ever read the fine print to begin with. Uh, you know, there's, there's various... I mean, you can't assign any one motivation. There, there are some people who adhere to it because they really believe in the principles and, and they think they're doing good. You've got people who are just too dumb to know the difference. And you've got some people who are just over-con artists. I mean, I would... I would I would put someone, I mean, just to name names, I mean, you've got some people that are true believers, but I, I think someone like Rebecca Watson or PZ Myers are just con artists. So, yeah, I mean, what, they're trying to do, what they're trying to do is just use the, the movement for their own personal aggrandizement and so they don't really have to work for a living. Although, although PZ Myers has a nominal job as kind of a, a, a biology teacher at a you know, community college in a town of 
5,000 people, and he hasn't published anything of note in 20 years. Mike Aru, we've got a question from someone in our chat room named Astro Kid. Uh, he says, what do you think will be the end game in the skeptics community? It's been three years, and none of the big shots have come together to fight the madness. Um, I don't know if that's an, if that's an entirely accurate assessment, uh, because we, you know, I, I have seen a couple videos uh, where some skeptics have have sort of come out and have taken some soft swings at at um, atheism plus. But what do you think is going to happen? Um, well, I, I really I can't predict, but I, just I, I see I see the point of the question, which is, yeah, you know, there's a lot of bystander effect in this. Uh, you know, the the, the story of. Uh, Kitty Genovese, who was stabbed to death while a bunch of people looked out the window, and everyone thought someone else was going to call the police. And uh, we've got that. It, it, when, when people see other people being attacked, it, they don't want to get involved, and they figure, well, someone else will do something about it. But no one else is going to do something about it. And the case with Ben Radford is, I mean, this really is a test case on a lot of levels, because if people don't do something about this, they're not going to do anything about anything. Right. I mean, this is so egregious, and it's so clear that uh, he, he's, he's a victim of a false accusation and, and evidence that was um, fraudulent. But, I mean, to take how they're dealing with this, you could take the Center for Inquiry, which did uh, a nominal investigation of some of the claims that Stolz now made, and it seems as though they wanted to split the difference. They didn't really believe that he had done anything wrong, but based upon her forged emails, they claim that he sent inappropriate emails. So they, they, they censored him just enough to make it seem as though they, they were willing to kind of throw him slightly under the bus for the sake of appearances. And I mean, that's, that's got to stop everyone, uh, you know, saying because I'm, you know, it's like the, 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 um, the aphorism that was about uh, the, the uh, I, I hate to God win it by, by bringing up the Third Reich, but people say, you know, they came after the gypsies and I did nothing because I was not a gypsy. And then finally, you know, they come after you and there's no one to stand up for you. And people have to start standing up for people against this kind of abuse and dogpiling and witch hunting just on principle. Do you, do you think that's happening? I mean, aside from yourself, and I know that there have been some very vocal supporters of, of Radford. Do you do you see do you, do you see people who formerly threw him under a bus you know, actually vocalizing you know second thoughts or regret that they actually did this to um, anywhere to any extent? Well, you know, there's still a lot of people that are, are conciliatory, and there's a lot of people that res respond to the. The claim is that if you disagree with any of these people, you're against equality or you're a misogynist, and sure. you know, they'll go for that. And there's people who are just so enamored with their own image of being, you know, conciliatory and the only adult in the room and being reasonable that they'll keep trying to engage these people in rational discourse when they've long ago proven that they're incapable of it. But the end game is either people do something about these carpetbaggers, these people attacking other people, making false accusations, or the atheist and skeptical movement will die. At least the online version of it will. And if that's the case, then it deserves to. Well, yeah, uh, this is, you know, that's the, the economics of the free market uh, apply to ideas as well. Uh, for those yeah. who for those who are interested in helping Ben Radford, go to Rocket Hub. The site is Rocket Hub, and look for the Ben Radford Legal Fund. For those of you who are in chat, I'm placing that in there. And and look, folks, anything helps. Five bucks here, ten bucks there. Um, I, I he's. 47% of the way towards uh, the goal for this project. Um, and look, I'm pretty damn sure 
uh, he's probably going to be paying a hell of a lot more out of pocket uh, for his lawyers and the defense of what's going on than what this project can raise, even if it is successful. Uh, but but go in, show your support. Yeah, Put this guy, he, he, Ben oh. Radford, out. Go to Rocket Hub. Ben Radford Legal Fund. Let's, let's talk about Stolz Now's uh, fundraising efforts on the Indiegogo page. She has already raised nearly sixty thousand dollars in just the short time that it's been there. Is it? Do you do you think all this money is coming from her friends in the skeptic community, or do you think it's? Uh, I mean, I, whenever I see a, a dollar sign that big, I can't help but think that some foundation uh, kicked in a you know, five thousand dollars or so. But what? First of all, what do you think about the amount of money that? Because this sixty thousand dollars is a lot of money. What do you think about the the amount of money she's raised so far? And also, uh, there have been people I've, I've seen comments saying that Indiegogo should should take this down because clearly this is fraudulent. There's way too much documentation on Beb's website for them to to ignore this. Uh, what, what do you think about that as well? Well, she she's these these people uh, in free thought blogs and skeptics. They're very good at marketing. I mean, that's their focus anyway. And Stolznow has marketed this as she being, not only giving money to help her as a victim of sexual harassment, right. but with a general appeal to aid for victims of sexual harassment. And when she initially started the fundraiser, she had a goal of $30,000, and then she said she would donate whatever extra money to some other organization, and that fell through the cracks very quickly. Right. Then she said, when, when, when it was clear that she was making more than $30,000 and it was approaching, I think at the, at the time, like uh, uh, forty or, or $50,000, then she said she would use the money to countersue Ben Radford. So in other words, people were now paying to finance her continued assault on Ben Radford. So, do you think that Indiegogo is is in the wrong by having this fundraiser up there? Do you think that they're doing something unethical as people, as other people have said? By um, I, would, I, would, I would err on the side of just letting people have their, their, their fundraisers because, uh, you know, where do you draw the line? Right. Um, yeah, it, 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 you were talking about, I mean, I'm not a free marketer, but in this case, I mean, since you mentioned it before, then you just let the market decide. I mean, right. if it's something really egregious, then okay. And yeah, I, you can see the, a line being crossed in that she made a video where she mentioned Radford by name. Right. So it was kind of interesting. On one hand, on the title of, of this fundraiser, she was saying it was for a victim of sexual harassment or for victims of sexual harassment. But then when you get into the video, when she's talking to the camera, you see it's all personal. Yes. Uh, what do you think will happen if it, this case goes to court or whether it, if it's maybe it'll be settled out of court and Ben Radford wins? Do you think that this will be... How, how big of a pie in the face is this going to be to not just Stoles now, but all of her supporters and, of course, you know, Watson and Myers and, and all these other jokers that, that we've been talking about. What do you think is going to be the, the output or the outcome for them? It's not going to make a dent in them. Okay. Um, uh, well, first of all, Rad Radford initially tried to settle without this going to court, and he got he got strung around. Apparently, Stoles now was using this this negotiation process to see right. what he had, and also to make him expend resources. Yep. Um, it, it might be the case where he still wants to settle out of court, which would be uh, un unfortunate because at this point he's fighting for his life. Um, yes, there's no and, doubt and about he, that. That he, he's, he's got to leave conventional weapons behind and just, um, for lack of a better term, destroy her in court. It's the only way that he could come close to clearing his name. But as far as, uh, you know, people like P.C. Myers and Jason Tabo and, you know, Stephanie Zavon, 
it's not going to make any difference to them whatsoever because they're they're like the doomsday cultists who stand on top of a mountain waiting for the world to end, and when it doesn't end, they sit around and go, oh, wait, we didn't carry a one here, and, and they, they fix a new gate. And what happens is that every time that a, a, a kind of a cult organization hits up against reality like that, yeah, some people wander off. But what we're seeing with free thought blogs and atheism plus, some people wander off, but they start maintaining a denser core of hardcore fanatics. And that's what will happen. If they are completely devastated by this decision, there are going to be some people that walk off. But the core lunatics, the people who have something really invested in this financially, psychologically, or otherwise, it's not going to make any difference to them. In fact, they may just double down. They I, my yeah I, I would I would think that they would double down what they what they're going to say speaking of pie in the face uh, was that the uh, this is absolute proof of the patriarchy uh, and in fact uh, the fact that um, uh, Radford wins the case shows the systematic oppression uh, that women experience at the at the hands of men, and indeed at the male-run state. Yeah, but you know, the thing is, if, if, if that were the case, and, you know, this had some bearing on, like, a general rape culture where this kind of harassment is, is, is lauded or tolerated, how the hell did she get $60,000? Well, yeah, well, I mean... Oh, some people don't like we can, it. We can, we can, we can certainly... We can certainly point to that, but of course they'll they'll say, "Well, this you know this this shows us that the that the revolution is up and coming. Uh, prepare for the revolution." Um, and once again, you know, just like um, uh, other people have have been saying for a while now, that these individual efforts and the funds going towards these individual efforts show that there is. This wanting change on the horizon that uh, the majority of people, individuals, actually agree with them but are too afraid to come out and actually say anything other than to drop an anonymous donation, that type of thing. So I, I don't see the 60000 uh being raised as any barrier uh, to their rhetoric at all. Uh, I, th I think, in fact, it, they would simply twist it to bolster uh, their own rhetoric. I think what this shows is is the danger of trying to establish test cases like this, uh, trying to use these sort of uh, things to prove some larger societal point in which Ben Radford becomes sort of the poster boy for harassers and, and, the, and there's, a, there's a greater social good in his destruction. When in fact, um, you know, this it, from Stolzmel's point of view, this could have snowballed out of control. As she told a few people, and it might have been that she might have been limited in these accusations to um, you know trying to hide from her husband that she was still pursuing a, a sexual relationship with Radford right. while she was engaged. Uh, it could have been limited to because uh, they had to split their time on a podcast. Uh, Radford at Stoll's now, Monster Talk. It could be just that she started these accusations with CFI just to get him off the podcast. Well, yeah, because he, he did, he did the, the accusations, he seemed to start having trouble but, with her when he accused her of not pulling her weight on the podcast to the other co-host. He, he said, listen, she's not pulling her weight, and the other guy agreed with her, so I guess that's, that's a big red flag there. Um, uh, so, and again, of course, there's the wanting an alibi for wanting to carry on an, an affair with Ben, even after she was engaged. I, I think that she, well, I thought that I had saw on the uh, website somewhere that she was actually still trying to pursue something even after the guy, even after she was married to the guy. Um, so you're, you're I think, it was, I think with, it, was, it was bad enough for what Souls now did to Radford on a personal level. But then you've got people running around like Amanda Marcotte and PZ Myers. That are that are now using this uh, as a, a sort of a, a white stag fire, right? To, to put their own agenda, right? 
That's the dangerous part. Let's um, let's talk for a minute about the actual damage this has done to Ben Radford. Now we know that he is he's of course he's lost a lot of friends. I, I don't know to what extent to. I don't know fully to what extent this has affected his employment life. To your knowledge, is this guy really s- scraping for money right now? Does he is he have a hard time getting work now because of this? Um, I don't know. I, I know you only met him once, but well, this is, just, this is just what I know from you know second and third hand sources. But obviously, it it's hurt his standing in the community. But more than that, you know, in the age of Google. The fact that his name is associated by... In fact, if you Google Ben Radford, the first thing that's going to come up are some articles uh, from Skeptic calling him a sexual harasser. Right. I mean, and that's never going away, ever. No, that will never go away. No. You, would, you would hope that people would be more careful about making these sort of... Uh, you know, using someone um, a, 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 as a prop... For their for their agenda, but they don't care. No, they, obviously they don't. And this is, and I, I just to add to this. I I myself have been the victim of, of false accusation in a professional environment, and I can tell you that it never goes away. You know, you'll never. It it's once that gets out there, it sticks with you forever. And that's why I think it's very very important that Radford sues for every single dime he can get, not just to make a point but to try to salvage his life, because this kind of thing, it just never stops. It never goes away. Uh, well, he's got to use the courts to not, uh, not to show he's not guilty, but to prove uh, him innocent. Right, absolutely. He's got to. Which is possible in a civil case like he's bringing. Sure. Sure. Uh, but, as far, but, but as far as his name being associated with this and, and, and being in search engines, and, and the fact that even if he wins in court, these people are still going to write the same crap, um, you know, he's, he's hurt irreparably by this. And, and I, don't, I, don't, I don't see any uh, that going away. It's a scarlet letter. Right. And, and this is, you know, this is one of the things we, we do have a tendency to talk about is the fact that uh, there's always this this cloud that hangs over an individual who's been accused uh, of these types of crimes for the rest of their lives. Uh, where is his actual justice? I mean, even if he wins the case, this is a civil case, not a, not a criminal case. It's, I don't think that uh, uh, she's going to face much in the way of reprimand. No. And, uh, it's also fair to say that she will probably never. There's, she's got enough supporters, and of course, there's all these people that have been rooting for her for the entire time. Even though she might have to pay a large chunk of money, which is going to hurt, and I hope it hurts, she's always going to have people that will let her cry on their shoulders. She'll always have supporters. Uh, like like you said, people will still write about this, and they will still um, name Radford as as the uh, as the bad guy. So. There's no. She's not going to pay the consequences that she really should pay, even though she is going to pay a lot of money if she if he, right. Redford wins, which he will. And and, and, and the, the people that perpetrated this with free thought blogs and atheism plus and skeptics, I mean, they never have to admit they're wrong. They put things into place like uh, blocking people on Twitter or PC Myers comment threads where he'll 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 go in and he'll remove any comments critical to him and. And then, or, or ban someone, and then keep talking about them as if their lack of response is because they don't have a response to him, not because he banned them. These people have put into place actual structures so they never have to face the fact that they're wrong. Right. Let's talk now. Let's talk about the Center for Inquiry. People post on there in defense of Ben all the time. I've seen in, in some post in postings that um, yeah. Lindsay has put up people were actually supportive of Ben, saying you shouldn't, you really shouldn't say these things about, about Radford because there's clear indication that there's a problem here, that she lied, and this is just the thing that these atheists and plus people do. So, it, what, what do you think, I mean, how do you think the, um, how do you think, this is a question, how do you think the Center for Inquiry is going to react 
when uh, they're, Bradford they're, goes they're, to they're, gate. They're, the Center they're for Inquiry. The Center for Inquiry is going to do whatever is necessary to cover their ass. Do you think they'll, they'll write a retraction or something? Do you think they'll say, hey, listen, we we're sorry we wrote these things about Radford. Clearly, we were wrong. Do you think, well, I mean, I would hope they would have it within themselves to do well, that. If they, write a, if they write a retraction, it's going to be in the most spineless legalistic language um, right. you know, possible. You know, the Center for Inquiry, was, uh, was, uh, or, or previously Psychop, was, uh, was founded by uh, a noted skeptic, Kurtz, and, uh, uh, and they wrested control of it for him. He got to see his organization co-opted before he died. Really? So, I mean, they, they put lawyers and ideologues in charge of the Center for Inquiry. So, to, oh, to so these, people were, these people weren't atheism plus people, obviously. They were just people who... Who were these people? Yeah. Well, was, well, well, you've got someone like the, who's their executive director, Melody Hensley, who is um, a, a hysterical... Uh, she, she claimed that she, she has a habit of... of writing nasty things about people on Twitter, particularly about other women. It's almost like a, a mean girl click. And then when people push back, she she has to hit the fainting couch. She's even claiming that Twitter gave her post-traumatic stress disorder. And that's their executive director. So, I mean, what kind of response do you think you're going to get from CFI? Yeah, well, I mean, it just seems to me that, that Ron Lindsay's um, a, a reasonable guy, from what I've read... Um, even though I, you know, he's he's kind of thrown Radford under the bus, but uh, it just seems that I don't know. I, I would certainly, I would have hoped, from him at least, to have some sort of apologetic retraction, yeah. saying, you know, I, I jumped the gun here or something. No. But I guess in, in, the, the, in the Bradford accusation, the only thing Ron Lindsay cared about was those parts of the accusation which he found false that would affect his fundraising. Right. Okay. The only thing he cares about. Okay. And, and he, he did give a good space, uh, a, a good little uh, uh, skeptical kernel talk at a women in skepticism conference. Right, yeah. That's and then he hit the outrage, thought. and then he backed off. Right. Did he really back off? I mean, I thought that he, I thought that he stuck up for himself, because when Watson wrote uh, a response to it... Uh, yeah, he, 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 he stuck, stuck up for himself against Rebecca Watson... But if, but if you're not going to stand up against Rebecca Watson, you're not going to stand up against anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Boy. Oh, wow. Truth. Wow. Yeah, so I am kind of, you know, um, I was a member of the skeptical community for, for uh, a, a long time, I mean, following it, not in, in, in any noticeable position. And then I... I was a member of the National Capital Area Skeptics, and then I, you know, it, it went by the wayside. And I came back into it in the last three years when all of this started. And I'm just, I'm just appalled um, at some of the people that we have in the movement now, and, and some of the directions that it's going in. And no, and I don't have a lot of hope because what? really, I mean, uh, it, it's it, if the skeptical community can't inoculate uh, inoculate itself against these kinds of people. What, what is it? Yeah, that's what I've been saying all along. If you, the skeptical community, what they value is, from what I've seen, the core values are we are anti ideology, we're anti dogmatism. And these atheism plus people, they're all about dogmatism. They're all about this feminism, it's all dogma. And I've seen a lot of people hold the line against this, this kind of stuff. But then, as you've said, and as and I've seen myself, a lot of people have embraced it, and you know, saying, "Oh, well, let's let's go ahead and be about social justice. How could we possibly be against gender equality and all this?" But it's it's clearly, even from an outside observer like myself, it is clearly ripping this community apart. It's ripping mm -hmm. people's lives apart, obviously, with Ben Radford, and it's making it's really making the entire community look look bad. It, it's it, right. it really is. Well, what, uh, what, uh, un unfortunately, uh, in the process, you you lose a a sort of check and balance on society. I mean, before you had a, you had a lot of intellectuals who were willing to sit down and and 
take a look at evidence in, in an objective fashion, or as, or as objective as what they, they, they possibly could, given, given their individual circumstances, and then communicate to the rest of society those findings. And we stand the chance of losing that. That is a very important check and balance inside of, of any society. And right now, with the way that academe has been overrun by ideologues, I, I sort of looked at the skeptic community as the, the last bastion of, uh, of the communication of objective reality. And, yeah. and we're about to lose that. That is, that is a loss to cry over, because when those individuals are, are scattered to the wind, or are all of a sudden broken into smaller groups. Uh, they are no longer as effective at teaching people how to guard themselves against falsity. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that's something that Ben Radford did. He, he, uh, his, his forte was investigating things like the Chupacabra or River Monsters. And, and the reason you do that is not because, you know, you, you, you think... Uh, a chupacabra is, is a really important thing. But by studying that, you learn how people uh, misperceive things or how a tale gets better in the retelling. Um, you know, there's important things to be learned about, uh, about uh, people's perception and dissemination of information. But then you get people like Casey Myers who dismiss that as the chupacabra beat. Or you have people like Rebecca Watson who dismiss that kind of skepticism as Bigfoot skepticism because it's not dealing with any great social issue, which is, you know, just to show that they missed the point completely. Well, this is, this is an unfortunate development, and uh, I hate to say it, you're, you're not... You're not providing us any, any hope here, Mike Roo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll, give I was... you, I'll give you one bit of hope in, in that in, in a schism like this where you've got people coming in uh, who are basically just really uh, superficial and, and shallow. You've got people that are running around wearing one of Amy Roth's surly ramic nex necklaces and let's say science, and they go, oh, well, I'm wearing a necklace, so I'm, I'm into science, even if they don't know a damn thing. It's good to separate those people out, and, and, and I think this schism has, has got a, at least we, you know, it, at least this schism has kind of been a rectal thermometer so we could spot who the assholes are. <laughs> Nice. Oh, oh, oh. oh that yeah. Hurts. That was sweet. well. Even, even, even better. Um, I mean, it, it could be a um, a Raul just to see how how deep the asshole goes. Um. <laughs> oh, I'm not pursuing this metaphor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys can run with it. Yeah, I, I, I think there's hope. Uh, it, it, in the long run that hopefully these people will kind of get tired of pretending that they're skeptics or, you know, uh, tired of, of pretending that atheism can be turned into a belief system and they'll wander off and infest somewhere else, hopefully. Well, or they can just get a job. I don't right. know. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen. Okay, I mean, listen. I, I, I mean, the horror endgame for someone like Rebecca Watson is eventually she'll have to get a job. Right. Yeah, eventually, eventually that fry station in the sky will call to her and she'll have to go there and, and, and either become a world-class uh, uh, stewardess or, or work the fry station at McDonald's. Stewardess, you sexist bastard. I know. <laughs> I'm such an asshole. <laughs> all right, well, listen, uh, that's about all the time we have. Um, Mike, yep. stay on the line because I want to talk with you after we after we call the show, please, if you would. Um, but thanks a lot for calling in. We really appreciate it. I was looking forward to you calling in. You've given us a, a lot of great information, and if, this has been a really good show because of it. And thanks a lot for calling in, Fetal Bogan again. Always a great show host. I'm sorry. Say say again. Give the links again. The, the links. Fund. 
Yes, okay, uh, I'll, sure. go, I'll go ahead and give those out. Uh, folks, you need to go uh, to, give me just one minute here. I had it just a moment ago. The Ben Radford Legal Fund on Rocket Hub, the world's crowdfunding machine, is their motto. Rocket Hub, Ben Radford Legal Fund. Look, folks, they're 47% of the way. And I promise you that 47% is probably uh, representative of less than one-tenth of what this guy is really going to be paying in order to take care of these types of problems that he's got. Do you, so, are you looking at right now how much money has he um, raised so far? Uh, 4645 Okay, good. So, so in the past couple of days, people have actually been donating. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's, that's great. great. Please, people, please consider donating to this. This is really, it, this really is important Look, if, that he has some resources to deal with when he goes to, into battle here, because this really is a big deal. And it is. And, and look, this is this is really a, a matter of, of putting putting your money where your mouth is, as far as uh, the idea of helping men and boys, especially especially with a clear cut case like this. I mean, yeah. of of a of, of malicious, malicious false accusation. Uh, so absolutely, Rocket Hub, Ben Radford Legal Fund. All right, everybody, that does it for tonight. Thanks again, Field Logan. Thanks again, Mike Aru. James, uh, I think we're going to go ahead and call tonight. Do we have any advice for the listeners? Absolutely. Take the red pill. This show has been a production of a voice and format. We thank our guests and listeners for joining us. Royalty free music is provided by www.bensound.com. That's www.bensound.com. Take care, and remember, take the red pill.